Welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kuwait, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? We are continuing on with The Last of Us Season 1 and the season finale. Thanks so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see a cut-down version of our reaction because we can only show you a limited amount of picture-in-picture. Picture. But if you want to watch the whole thing with us, no cuts, no interruptions, no compromises, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash or become a member of this channel where you'll get access to the full uncut reaction, but you will need your own HBO Max subscription so you can open up each episode in an adjacent window to our reaction. We'll give you a 3-2-1 countdown sync, and it'll be like you're watching with two of your favorite pals from the internet. Now, if you're watching this on Patreon, our memberships are ready. Thanks so much for supporting us here. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Here we go. Oh, huh? oh not Ellie, but... Wait a second. <gasps> You know who this is? Oh, it might be the uh, Ellie's mom. Yeah, and it played also by Ellie. Played by the <laughs> the voice actress yeah. who did Ellie. Yeah. Okay. Oh God. Jesus, that's harrowing. Dang, she's super pregnant. <laughs> It's gonna be like a blade situation. Oh, like where she gets bitten? Oh no. It's a high stress situation. Of course, the baby's gonna wanna come out. Oh, right into the nursery. What are you gonna do? Oh, that's the knife, right? Yeah. The, uh, Ellie, Ellie's knife. Is she gonna... Is she cesarean -y? Okay, no. She's just gonna do it. Oh, my freaking God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, go away. Oh, jeez. Oh, my Whoa. God. What is with HBO and crazy deliveries? Oh, no. Uh. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh. Gosh, if it like transmitted through the umbilical cord. Oh, oh that's crazy. Oh. How does she survive, though? It's okay. <laughs> okay. Damn. Well, no one else came in the room to take Ellie off her hands, right? Yeah. And so I'm Not like, yet. okay, so my second assumption is, okay, so she survives then? Yeah, I'm wondering, because then, then, then how do they immune? know that her name's Ellie? If she's the only one there. You know? Yeah. Well, she could have said... Oh, yeah. I guess she could have told someone. She could have told, um, Anybody, what's her name? The Firefly lady yeah. that, like, oh, I want to name my daughter Ellie. My kid Ellie, if it's a girl. Okay. We're about to find out. Maybe she took herself out before she could do any damage to Ellie. Well, they said it could take up to two days. Yeah, and she got bitten in her leg. Tess got bitten in the neck. Yeah. So she, she turned right away. She got bitten in the leg, so maybe it takes more time. Oh. 
want you to take her with you to Boston. Find someone to bring her up and make sure that she's safe. I can't do that. And I want you to give her this. Her name is Ellie. I can't. How long have we known each other? up right now and then you kill me please no. you love her you'll kill her just do it cover her ears <laughs> did a good job with covering her ears know, right? dude I found this in there. Beefaroni, Chef Boyardee. Oh, cool. Have you ever played this? Boggle? Mm -mm. If you want to beat me at something, it would be this. <laughs> <laughs> you want to learn how to play guitar? Ellie? Hmm? Oh, yeah. That'd be great. At that point, if I'm Joel, I'm like, okay. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> you are not you. Yeah. Let's get to the bottom of this. Um, but maybe I'm a different kind of dude. I don't know. Maybe as they're nearing their destination, she's starting to feel anxious about separating oh. from him. No way up. I think you need a ladder, Joel. If I get you up there, you can drop that ladder down. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> They waited this long to give us that reference. One, two, up. Wow. Just like the game. It's amazing what amuses us. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered how boosts work in real life. They always seem kind of awkward to me. Well, they are a little awkward. Whoa, 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 Ellie, whoa. That's not how you do that. Oh, he climbed that with like no spot. Come on! I'm afraid uh, of ladders since you fell down. The way this is shot is a little bit anxiety inducing. Ellie! Come on! Yeah, how did she see it from so far away? What? Maybe it's a view. Oh, giraffes. It's gotta be a giraffe. It's gotta be a giraffe. Come on. Is it a giraffe? It's a giraffe! <laughs> <laughs> oh! What are you doing? It's all right. Can you hurry up? Come you know, on. come to think of it, my whole life I've never seen a giraffe that close. No. Like to its face. Oh. This moment always reminded me of Jurassic Park. Oh, how cool! Hey. <laughs> 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 I know you want to protect me. You have. And when we're done, we'll go wherever you want. Tommy's, Sheep Ranch. <laughs> we'll follow you anywhere you go. Oh. They put these places up all around. Emergency medical camps. They had me in one just like this. So what was wrong with you? It's for this. Uh, the guy who shot and missed. Well, I gotta hand it to the army people. They were way better at stitching you up than I was. It was me. What? Sarah died. And I couldn't see the point anymore. And I wasn't scared either. I was ready. Went to pull the trigger. I, I flinched. Still don't know why. So time heals all wounds, I guess. It wasn't time that did it. Aw. Hug it out before it gets awkward. I'm glad that... That didn't work out. Me too. We should probably get going. Yeah. <laughs> Why isn't it coming out? <laughs> Moon rocks taste better than earth rocks. Why? Because they're meteor. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that, that was actually. 
actually good. That's a zero out of all right, ten. All right, all right. What did the green grape say to the purple grape? Breathe, you idiot. What? Breathe, you idiot. Those are three out of ten. <gasps> no, no, who's that? Five. No! Five out Five. of ten. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Please tell me they oh. are good. <laughs> Oh no, 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 no. Oh, fireflies, okay. You oh! Pretty hard. Patrol didn't know who you were. Where's Zoe? She wasn't hurt. Not even a scratch. She's mostly worried about you. We all know you. Just take me to her. She's being prepped for surgery. Our doctor, he thinks that the cordyceps in Ellie has grown with her since birth. Why is she in surgery? It produces a kind of chemical messenger. It makes normal cordyceps think that she's cordyceps. It's why she's immune. He's going to remove it from her, multiply the cells in a lab, produce those chemical messengers. And then we can give it to everyone. Cordyceps grows inside the brain. It does. Oh, shit. I was there when she was born, Joel. I promised her mother that I would save her child. I promised. I'm the only one who understands. I have no other choice. But isn't there another way, maybe? Walk him out to the highway, leave him there with his pack. If he tries anything, shoot him. She's a hard lady. I'm surprised she didn't, she didn't send more soldiers to escort him out. I mean, she, she just acknowledged that he's a badass. Exactly. Said, keep walking. Okay. Where is she? Fuck you. I don't have time for this. Oh, wow. They would have heard those gunshots. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're all scrambling yeah. now. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I was like, kneecap him, maybe? I don't know. Dang. Brutal. Oh. I was like, baby girl, I will literally kill everyone for you. Yeah. Unhooker. How did you get in here? I said, unhook her. I won't let you take her. <laughs> unhook her. You gonna do it? No. Oh my God, please. Turn around. Oh, just like when she was a little baby. Oh, there she is. How long till she's torn apart by infected or murdered by raiders? Because she lives in a broken world that you could have saved. Maybe, but it isn't for you to decide. Or you. So what would she decide, huh? Because I think she'd want to do what's right. Even after what you've done, we can still find a way. You were running some tests on you? And some others. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you. People that are immune. The doctors, they couldn't make any of it work. They've actually... Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You've just come after her. Dang. Swear to me that everything you said about the fireflies is true. I swear. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm very, very curious about your feeling about this. I knew all of the beats that were coming. Oh, really? Yeah. I think that giraffe thing came much, much earlier in the game, but everything that transpired at the hospital, beat for beat, exactly the same. I wasn't surprised by any of it. I was surprised by the stylistic choice. 
and I'm of two minds about it, as I often am with this show. What do you mean um, about the stylistic choice? Because in the game, it's more about this harrowing experience of rescuing Ellie. And when you get her, you're still assholing out of there. Got it. Being okay. chased by fireflies. And you're trying to, like, survive. And, the, like, the confrontation that he experiences here is exactly like in the game. The flashbacking is the same in the game, at least as best as I can recall. The exchange on the mountain towards the end when she goes, swear to me. It's played a little bit differently. I feel like he added some more information in the car. She was a little bit more upbeat in the car, as I recall. But maybe I'm remembering it wrong. But she definitely had her doubts. Yeah. But there was still a little bit more of a, a spunky feeling to her as opposed to like this kind of darker feeling that is being uh, done by yeah, Bella Ramsey here. She's been a bit moody since the beginning of the yeah. episode, which for me, I, I just kind of took that as, well, she knows that she's coming to the end of her journey with Joel and she, you know, she loves him yeah. and the possibility of being separated from him is probably weighing on her mind a lot. Yeah, but I wasn't really sure what that all meant at the end. Like probably she knows that he's lying and I, I thought that was kind of beautiful like or bittersweet in a way because i think as parents a lot of the time you do kind of have to lie to your kids or i mean it depends what school of parenting right like some people are like, no you must tell your kids the truth about everything but i think that a lot a lot of the time parents do lie in order to protect their children and he's doing that with her where he lied about what happened and also because he knows that if she knew that she was still the one person that could potentially cure everyone save and, humanity. And, and save humanity just like marlene said her choice would be oh fine well open me up you yeah. know take my brain and uh this is my gift to humanity it's, it's bigger than me like we all know that that's what she would do yeah and so I thought it was really beautiful the way that the episode was crafted. Like there was a lot of kind of bookending that they were doing and the, the messages that they were conveying, I thought were really strong. I loved the beginning with her mom and kind of getting to understand where she came from and like what happened to her and, and how she became immune. And I think that scene really hit me just because I guess I, I feel some sort of connection there being a woman and kind of being able to potentially like imagine what those feelings might be for a mother who sure. gives birth to a baby to realize then that she is the thing that could harm her baby and she's just trying to like help her baby survive it broke my heart as well because ellie grew up believing that like you know everyone who loves her leaves her but her mom had no choice that was really sad because yeah of you know all the stuff that had happened to Ellie but I thought that it was really cool that they had that book ending of like her being picked up by Marlene and then um, the shot that they used when she was being picked up by Joel, Joel yeah. to me seemed very reminiscent of of how they shot that when she was a little baby. So I thought yeah. that was really cool. I like the in, the introduction to this episode of giving us a chance to see Ellie's mom and all that stuff, especially with that guest star. Yeah, with that, Ash, that Ashley cool. Johnson. That was a really nice way to root us into Marlene's perspective on everything. Like we buy into her perspective on what she's giving up. Because when you play it in the game, it just feels a little bit more cold, I think, from Marlene's perspective. Like, irrespective of what she says, it seems like she's just being calculated. But here... Do, do you see that scene with the mom in the game? No. Okay. That's what I'm saying, is that because of that, I feel like, you know, you, you get Marlene's perspective without having Marlene's perspective. Which is, she watched Ellie grow up yeah. from the time she was born to this moment now where she has to decide to make the sacrifice and put her on the cross. Like, that's crazy uh, for Marlene's perspective. And it's like she, and then, you know, she ends up dying just like in the game. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it was cool as well because you really understand Marlene's character too because of just how she was able to shoot her best friend like that. And I know I said, like, if you love her, you'll kill her. Yeah. The way that she was able to just like walk out, you know, make sure the baby's okay, come back in with the gun and just like, Pow. She's a woman who is decisive and will do the hard things that are necessary in order for the greater good. Yeah, yeah. They did a good job of putting little seeds for stuff that's going to come up in next season. Because I, I know what's coming up. Oh. You know, based because I played both games. And so 
they emphasize certain things here. I'm not going to be specific, but they emphasize certain things here because of what's going to come up. They did it in a subtle enough way that only when you watch what happens next, you're going to be like, oh, that's why they did that shot here. You know what I mean? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I don't yeah. know. So the two minds thing that I was talking about, the approach here of him saving Ellie, it was more like sad and like as he killed all the fireflies and it was darker it was quieter it put more emphasis on the music like the third act of uh, 310 to yuma it was emphasizing more of the music than the action because it's not an action show it's an emotional show definitely the music was you know a very interesting choice because like you said it is very emotional especially with all of the like deep dark cello that yeah. was going on and it, it just kind of makes you feel really sad because yeah. of all the low notes yeah now i respect the choice to go that direction. I think what I was kind of anticipating is the crescendo. And the crescendo felt more quiet for me. And I'm, that might be a byproduct of the fact that I knew what was coming. That's why I was very curious about your perspective because you didn't know what was coming. And maybe you felt the full crescendo even with an emphasis on the emotion rather than the action. I thought it was nicely done because like you said, the focus of the show has been more emotional uh -huh. and it's been about relationships. It's been about humans you know okay. humanity and all of that and so the choice to have that whole violent scene played out underscored by that sad and heavy music yeah i think just kind of made the excessive violence a, a little bit more palatable for me okay. and also that it wasn't kind of focusing on a lot of the kills you know okay it was kind of doing it in an artistic almost beautiful way with the music so i was like okay i can i can see what's happening here like once again he's being the parent who's having to make the difficult choices but unlike marlene who's like i'm making these hard choices to save humanity he's making these hard choices to save ellie but in a way also to save himself sure. because you know he told us about well he didn't want to lose another daughter basically well yeah, yeah. because the last time he did he nearly took himself he out, nearly and, they, took and, himself they, out. And, and they gave us that little moment here yeah. in the show where he explained that i don't think that's in the game i thought that oh. was really nice as well and just the way it played out because like for me you know I, i'm someone who's like I, I want to have hugs or whatever in those types of moments but i thought that that was actually played out perfectly for those two characters yeah. because they're not the type who's going to be like, I'm going to hold your hand. I'm yeah. going to give you a hug or whatever. It's yeah. like, no, we get it, yeah. but we don't have to say it, which yeah. I thought was cool. So to what you're saying about the action, you know, going this direction with the more emotional choices, again, emphasizing the music and kind of shying away from showing the violence with emphasis, right? Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, you, you are trying to avoid going John Wick. <laughs> Yeah, because right? you right. could. You right. could do it that and, way. And, and so that's not the only choice, though. You have a movie like Sicario with Benicio Del Toro, mm -hmm. who is an excellent marksman, who is just deadly, by Denis... Uh, Vinov. Vinov, yeah. And it's like you take his approach to the, the third act of Sicario, and it's like that's a perfectly serviceable way to go as well. And like that would be the opportunity to see that joel come out and you can still have it be harrowing and feel dangerous and still accomplish the same beats because i feel like with that confrontation with marlene you're still going to hit those same beats i was a little sad that they took out some of the harrowingness that you experience in the game you hear joel saying i got you baby girl i got you baby girl and it's really like scary as the game and you're just trying to get out of there to save ellie mm -hmm. and you still you feel all the feels that you need to with the game. Right, whereas um, here it was kind of like super easy, barely an inconvenience. Yeah, almost. like he I just mean, took them out and wiped the floor with them. Definitely like yeah. the Terminator or something yeah. was coming through and just killing everyone. They did not stand a chance. He yeah. was basically just execution yeah. style everyone. Yeah, and, and and with the game, I mean, obviously, you know, there's the flaw of you being the, the player, right? Like there's a sense of like you could die and, and screw up and have to start over, yeah. right? I got no sense of threat here well yeah because yeah. once he got her it was just like no, even before that while no, he was just going through it, i yeah. know but especially once he got her mm -hmm. i did have that thought of like oh geez what if someone comes now yeah like his hands are taken up with carrying a teenage girl yeah exactly not light I'm no sure. exactly and that's why in the game it still feels heroin because you're running from people as, as i recall you're running yeah. from people who are chasing you trying to get her back again though like i i respect the choices here because they're going for a different attitude entirely which actually falls more in line with someone who would make a show like chernobyl right yeah it's like it's not about the action at all it's about the feeling and i'm like all right cool i get it it wasn't what i wanted but i respect it and i like it yeah i wonder as well like what what themes they're trying to put across in this because here 
we have the opportunity to save humanity. If we're going off of like a lot of the breakdown videos that we've been watching and, and uh, the theme is kind of about love and how love is not necessarily the thing that we think it is, uh -huh. you know? And I wonder if this is kind of showing us the, the more selfish side of love where it's like really, it's scary, right? Because I understand as a parent, you're you're probably thinking about all those things. Like, but what if, what if they cut her brain open and it's all in vain? A vaccine can't be made anyway. You know, like what if it fails? Then I've lost my child for nothing. I've I've given up this child for nothing. And so I understand all of those thoughts that might be going through someone's mind at the time. But then, you know, it's like, but should we not have love for all of humanity as well yeah. is it not worth the sacrifice and you know we see here's an example of someone who is so wrapped up in his love for this one person and i do feel like that perhaps for him it is a little bit more selfish because it not only is it because he loves her but it's also because she has now become the sole purpose for his survival for his it is selfish. Here. It is selfish, yeah. but it's understandable. I think what was shitty, which is borrowed again straight from the game, is that they never gave Ayla the choice. Yeah. They never gave her the option. It was just like, no, you're going to die for this. And I think that's that's why we can kind of understand where Joel came from and, and that feeling of like he wants to protect her. I guess if they had given her the choice, there's no way she would have gone back with with Joel. Correct. Right? Exactly. So that, that wouldn't have played out. But in an ideal situation, the, the Fireflies would have sat her down and been like, okay, just so you know yeah. what's going on, this is what you're sacrificing in order f for the greater good. And I'm sure she would have taken a deep breath and gone, okay, I'll do it. Let's go. Yeah. But then that kind of screws up all the things that they wanted to do. Exactly. So it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it, you, it's still nonetheless a shitty situation. For yeah. Early. It's just like, you didn't even tell She's her. Like, she has no agency yeah. at all in this in in this life of hers, you know, yeah. other people have been making decisions for her the entire time. Overall, I think that they did a, a very interesting approach with this show in terms of the way they went about telling this story because they there were certain things you just could not do in the game, at least with the way they chose to tell the story in the game. Right. It was more linear. It's less jumping around in terms of the timeline, like back and forth. Whereas here, there was a lot of going back and forth and back and forth. And I, I think that for the show, it works very effectively. A lot of the feelings I've been expressing along the way, whether it's in reviews or whether it's in like live streams with Sintel, I think I still feel all those feelings. And I think I was allowed to prematurely commit to those feelings because of my knowledge of the game and the game's story and it being basically the same here. So for, for people who yeah. want to refresh, what were those feelings, Javi? Well, I, I do wish that we had some time with Bill on this adventure. Mm -hmm. Like we, we had this whole episode with Bill and I get why, and I get the positive aspects of doing it that way, but I just, I felt a little bit deprived of what the experience would, would have been to see Ellie and Joel with Bill, just like you do in the game. Sure. It's like, it's only because I experienced the game that I'm like, well, that that's shitty that the audience that will never play the game didn't get to experience what I experienced. Which is with, him just being a crotchety old man and but, them having like a cantankerous relationship. But it's interesting and it justifies why we spend all that time with those two characters. Because as it, as it is, it's just this detour and they die, and I'm like, I still don't fully get that. You know what I mean? Like, I understand the the what it accomplishes in terms of like, you know, it's not all awful in the apocalypse. Like, yeah. you can still find love, yeah. and and there are st there's still like a silver lining there, and and beauty and all that stuff. And it's it's wonderful that these two people were able to find each other in the apocalypse. Cool, but like at the end of the day, though, like, how does that serve the story? That, the greater good of the story. Okay, well, think about it now that we've reached the end of the story or for this season, yeah. right? Like, in a similar way, Joel didn't give up at the beginning of the apocalypse, right? Like, for whatever reason, maybe his body knew better or his heart knew better than his mind. Okay. And he, his hand slipped. He didn't die. And so now that he's at this point, he can look back and see that there was a purpose. And that's what he keeps telling Ellie, like, you have to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. It's because you just don't know where you're going to end up. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you might feel like crap now and you might feel like there's nothing left to live for, but you don't know that yeah. until you reach the end. I guess, yeah, no, thematically it still is, is consistent and it tracks. Yeah. I get that. It's not all themes though. Make the show 12 episodes or something, and then you can do all the flashbacks and, and, and whatever you want. Like you can go in deep like that all you want, but it's like, it's, it's so much time was given to that and to Karen 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh yes. You yes. know, it's like a lot of time was given to stuff and I'm like, I, I feel like there's enough interesting here between the clickers and Ellie and Joel and Bill and the characters that, you know, the people that come across along the way, there's enough interesting going on that you don't have to like. Well, I think it's like, it, it's kind of falling into not the trap, but like just kind of what a lot of zombie apocalypse type movies kind of do, which is they draw you in with the, oh my God, we've got like crazy infected zombie people. No, right. And then it's not about them. It's about the humanity that sure. is left behind and on how the last of us deal yeah. With it. yeah the last of us that's yeah. what it's about so yeah. it's not about the clickers and the no i know the bloaters and whoever I, whatever again like i respect the direction the show went again two minds about it it's like this is more of a companion piece to the game than representing the game i think it's like these are two beautiful pieces of content two beautiful pieces of art yeah. that draw inspiration from the same thing but that are different and wonderful in their own ways. Sure. I only played a small portion of the game, right? Just the beginning. But it seems like there was so much and they just kind of managed to truncate it down in such a way that it was still really compelling and yeah. moving and wonderful. Well, I, I want to say this though, like all my complaints aside, this has to be the best video game adaptation that's out there. For me, it does not surpass Arcane in terms of like my, that that, sh that experience of like a game, but Arcane wasn't really drawing from anything in particular. It was its own thing that yeah. just did its own story. But then also you're much less invested in Arcane. Like you don't play that game. You correct. Don't, you don't pay, what is it? League of Legends. Cor correct. But I think that a great show will still be a great show. Yeah. I know it's weird to compare like an animation to a live action. I apologize for being weird like that, but like in terms of just like how it hits me and like the feelings I got, Arcane still did, did a better job in terms of like a video game adaptation. In sure. terms of live action, I would say that this definitely takes the crown of the best video game adaptation that's out there. Yeah. I can't think of anything else that does a better job of respecting the material elevating the material and giving it its just due. Like it's, it's yeah. what it needs in order to be palatable for everybody and make sense and be compelling. And, and be know, its own thing. And, and be its own, yes, yeah. and, and be its own thing. So in that regard, it definitely checked off all the necessary boxes and it's very artistic as well. There's no other video game adaptation I can think of that is as artistic in all the variety of ways that a show could be artistic or an adaptation could be artistic. Yeah. So it, it did a lot of fantastic stuff. You know, that's all well and good. <laughs> my, my raw feeling is my raw feeling at the end of the day. No, and you know I, what I that's mean? That's fine. And I'm sure there are people out there who second, third, what it is that you're saying. Yeah. But yeah, overall, I, I really, really enjoyed this. It was incredibly moving, really beautiful, well acted yeah. by everyone. I love that they also, you know, had Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson involved as well mm -hmm. as a kind of like a nod to the game. Yeah, but I went on a deep dive the other day of Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson and all that stuff of looking at their interviews and whatnot. Cause I was like so curious. Cause Troy Baker sounds nothing like Joel. Nothing like him. The voices are like nothing alike. Oh, you mean you like know, just it, how, like, how natural did, yeah, in the wild? Like how did he find that voice? How did he find that guy? You know? And I was just yeah. trying to find like how he found him. And the most interesting thing was because Joel is one of the most iconic characters in video game history, just like Mario. I know those are two weird things to compare, <laughs> but you can understand where I'm going with it's this in a, a second. It's me, Joel. Because the, the thing about it is, okay, so with Martin, whatever his last name is, who plays Mario, uh -huh. he showed up late to his audition and he begged them to, to just put him on tape. Like, please, I, you know, and he really quickly, he had to scramble and figure out who this Mario guy is. Yeah. And then they booked him. And that's his career. So with Troy Baker, first off, he was annoyed with his agent. He's like, I am not right for this role. I don't know why I'm auditioning for this. So he goes to the audition. He looks, he's got like a Final Fantasy type haircut, even in his outfit and everything like that. He, he walks in the room, everybody else looks like Joel. He does not. And he thinks to himself, if I leave now, they're not gonna know that I didn't show up. Right. I can just get out of here uh -huh. and I won't screw this up. He puts his hand on the doorknob and they say, Troy? He goes, yeah, huh? And they go, we're ready for you. He goes, oh, shit. okay. <laughs> so he goes in and he, and his voice just comes out and he does it and he kills it and he books it. And that's his, and then it just makes his whole career 
from there. You know, it's just wild. Yeah, you just never know. And sometimes yeah. those auditions, sometimes, where you have the least amount of preparation and, and you have the least amount of time to get into your head and screw it up, yeah. those are the best ones. Yeah. Where you're just like, or, or where you're like, I have nothing to lose. I'm clearly wrong for this part. Yeah. The homage they paid to the the game with the actors, with the little, you know, the ladder finally and the giraffe and all that <laughs> stuff. Like, they did a really nice job of acknowledging the gamers and servicing the story. Like, yeah. all around, this show did a lot of what it needed to do for most people, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm going to have my wish list at the end of the day that, that was not fulfilled, but I totally think, like, when I look back on this in the years to come, this is not only one of the best things to come out of like HBO Max and like a, as a video game adaptation, it's going to be like that seed that really changes the landscape I in the years so. to come. No, yeah. I, it's guaranteed this is going to change the landscape. You're going to look at that as like the iPhone, right? How the iPhone affected the, the cell phone industry and the internet and social media. This is going to affect storytelling in a dramatic way in terms of video game video game adaptations. Yeah. So anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you enjoyed this reaction and discussion and the show itself. Let us know your feelings in the comments below. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.